Hello learners, I am Sadak Sharma. I am an educator at An Academy, and I welcome you all to the courtroom trial. In today's case, I am going to act as a judge. The case is Indian Hotels and Restaurant Association versus the State of Maharashtra. This case is famously known as the Maharashtra Dance Bas case, and it's a landmark judgment. So, An Academy never fails in bringing exciting surprises for all of you, and the courtroom trial is one such surprise. Hello, everyone. This is Devishish Pandey, an educator at An Academy's judiciary platform. I will be representing the respondent, State of Maharashtra, in the instant case. The case deals with with various important topics of the Indian Constitution, including the fundamental rights and the power of the state to make laws. Hi, everyone. This is Kriti Bhatnagar, your An Academy CLAT educator. I am representing the appellants in this particular case. The court is now in session. So, the present matter is a merger of three different writ petitions: Civil Writ Petition Number Five Hundred and Seventy Six of Two Thousand Sixteen, Civil Writ Petition Twenty Four of Two Thousand Seventeen, and Civil Writ Petition One Hundred and Nineteen of Two Thousand and Seventeen. In this matter, we are going to discuss three different issues: whether the said legislation, which is which would be called for the sake of clarity as the impugned law of 2016 and the impugned rules of 2016 are violative of article 14 article 191a article 191g and article 21 of the constitution the second issue would be that whether the harsher punishment which is provided in the impugned act for obscenity would be in violation of article 14 and the third issue would be that whether the installation of cctvs in the dance bars is violative of article 21 now i will request the counsel for the appellants to start the submission on issue number 1 thank you your lordship i appear on behalf of indian hotels and restaurant association the said writ has been filed in this honorable court to question the legislation made by the maharashtra government namely prohibition of obscene dance in hotels restrooms bar rooms and protection of dignity of women 2016 the said legislation your lordship is violative of article 14 article 191a article 191g as well as article 21 of the indian constitution the state has no reasonable nexus neither intelligible differentia to come up with such a legislation the respondents counsel may start with his opening remarks much obliged your lordship i appear on the behalf of the state of maharashtra article 245 of the indian constitution empowers the state legislature to make laws for the state the act of the legislature represents the will of the people and it should not be lightly interfered with the act should be declared unconstitutional only if the unconstitutionality is visible on the face of it further your lordship article 15 clause 3 of the indian constitution empowers the state legislature to make special provisions for women and in the light of the same article the state government went ahead to ban the dance bar in the impugned act that the appellant have raised i want to mention your lordship that these dance bars are used as meeting points by the criminals and pick up points of girls for indulging in immoral activities and hence considering this social issue the state of maharashtra has come up with this legislation in the course of the proceedings the council will be proving all the data required to reach at this conclusion much obliged so in the light of the opening remarks made by the petitioners council and the respondents council this court had framed three issues the first issue would be that whether the said legislation which is the maharashtra prohibition of obscene dance in hotels restaurant and bar rooms and protection of dignity of women who are working therein act 2016 for the sake of clarity we will just refer to this act as the impugned act and the rules that are made under this act are uh, in violation of article 14 191a 191g and article 21 of the indian constitution the second issue that this court will deal with is whether the harsher punishment which is provided for obscenity in the impugned act is in violation of article 14 or not and the third issue that this court will deal with 
is whether the CCTVs which are installed in the dance bars is in violation of Article 21 or not. Now the court will request the counsels for the appellants to make their submission on issue number one. Thank you, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, the respondents in 2006 came up with a notification. Through that particular notification, they banned bar dancing in the bars of Maharashtra. To give validity and sanctity to that particular notification, they came up with an amendment to the Maharashtra Police Act of 1951. They added Section 33A as well as 33B so that they could ban the bar dancing in the bars of Maharashtra. Now, that particular amendment was challenged by the same petitioners in another case in uh, front of uh, the Honorable High Court of uh, Bombay who invalidated that particular amendment. Now, this was a challenge before the Supreme Court of India and the Honorable Supreme Court of India also affirmed the decision of the Maharashtra High Court. Instead of obeying that particular judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court, the respondents came up with a new legislation that is questioned in this particular case. Now, this legislation is nothing but old wine in a new bottle. Moving on to the first issue, uh, Your Lordship, the first issue that has to be decided in this particular case is because of this legislation, there was a complete ban of dancing in the dance bars in the state of Maharashtra, which is violative of Article 14, Article 15, Article 191A, as well as Article 191G and Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. Coming to the first point at hand, Your Lordship, how is this legislation that is made by the respondents violative of Article 14 of the Indian Constitution? Article 14 of the Indian Constitution provides us with right to equality that is available to every person in this uh, country. Now, in the instant case, this legislation that is made by the uh, respondent state is violative of Article 14 in the sense that it provides the dance, the bar dancing provision applicable to three star hotels or above, but this is not applicable to the hotels that are below three stars. Your Lordship, how is this equality? I would wish to ask uh, this honorable court, the respondents. Now coming to Article 191G of the Indian Constitution, Your Lordship, the impugned act is violative of Article 191G because it provides because Article 191G provides us with freedom of trade and occupation. Yet, the impugned law bars the dancing of the girls in such dance bars. How is this, uh, how is this allowing these girls to practice their choice of profession? And as uh, the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Menake Gandhi versus Union of India has already pronounced that whenever there is a violation of Article 14 and 19 of the Constitution, there is a clear violation of Article 21 of the Constitution as well. In order to prove our case, we have provided annexures in this particular petition. After going through annexure number 1, annexure number 2, and annexure number 2A, as highlighted by the counsel for the petitioner, this court prima facie observes that the impugned act of 2016 and the rules thereby violates Article 14, Article 191A and Article 191G of the Indian Constitution. Now I will request the counsel for the respondent to have his take on issue number one. Much obliged, Your Lordship. Before going into the merits of the case, and rebutting the provisions that have been stated by my learned counsel, we have to understand why this entire ban has been imposed by the government of Maharashtra. On this occasion, Your Lordship, I remember an interview of a girl conducted by an NGO named Prayas, and the detailed report has been annexed in annexure number H of the response. She told how she was brought from a slum of Maharashtra in guise of employment and then forced to do flesh trade. You, your Lordship, I want to attract your attention that these dance bars which the state of Maharashtra has imposed a ban are attracting young girls desirous of earning easy money and thereby indulging them into immoral activities. 
dance bars are used as the meeting points of criminals and pick up points of girls for indulging in sex trade. Your Lordship, it's important to read the preamble of the impunged act that is in question before this Honorable Court. The preamble of the act mentions, and I quote, an act to provide for prohibition of obscene dances in hotels, restaurants and bars to improve the condition of work, protect the dignity of women with a view to prevent their exploitation. Hence, the entire objective of this legislation is to provide a dignified life and thereby protecting the Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. I very well agree with the argument of my learned counsel that every citizen has a right under Article 191G to profess and practice any trade or occupation. But it is also relevant to understand that Article 191G is not absolute in nature and it with, comes with certain restrictions which are given under Article 196 of the Indian Constitution. The said provision states that the state can curb this right of profession in the interest of general public. Your Lordship, the interest of general public is a wide concept and has to be explained in the context of the facts and circumstances of the case. It's important to understand that these bar owners who are employing the girls for dance bars are being exploited because they are not actually given any salary and they are dependent on the tip given by the customers. The tip is incentive based in order to achieve larger sales and thereby making them vulnerable to the offenses named earlier. They are not paid any salary and the employer generally on a ratio of 70 to 30 take the money from the girls dancing in the dance bar. All these things, your lordship, are actually violating the article 21 of the Indian constitution. And this effort of the state government is to protect the dignity and the law is made under article 15, clause 3 of the Indian constitution to empower the women and protect them from this situation. That's all. Uh, Mr. Counsel, do you have any statistical backing to, to support your claim, to support the contention that you are making? Indeed, Your Lordship, I have annexed in annexion number H of my response a study by an NGO named Prayas and further a Sudha Chakur report which has categorically, categorically interviewed a lot of girls who were working in the dance bar and they have tried to analyze that where this dance bar sequence is going and they have come to the conclusion that this is not actually an employment but a way in which the girls, young girls, minor girls can be exploited in guise of employment. This court had taken into due notice the arguments that are advanced by the appellants and the arguments that are ad advanced by the councils for the respondents. Also, the arguments, the written arguments that have been advanced by both the councils have been taken into due record. Now, this court will pronounce the final observation in the end of the, in the end of this argument when we will deliver the final verdict. Coming to issue number two, this court will request the counsel for the petitioner to make, his sub, make her submission. Thank you, Your Lordship. Coming to the second issue at hand, Your Lordship, which is whether the harsher punishment provided by this act for obscenity is violative of Article 14. Your Lordship, the main argument is going to be twofold. First of all, is dance really obscene, Your Lordship? Dance is not obscene. It is a fair expression of art. Artists, movies, um, all the forms of arts are depicted through dance. They are not obscene, or are they? Whether somebody's expression of dance can, can be obscene is a question, is a subjective matter. It lies in the person whose, whose eyes are seeing that particular dance. The second uh, argument that I would like to present is, we have Indian Penal Code which also defines obscenity as an offence. Does Indian Penal Code not apply to state of Maharashtra? Your Lordship? 
if it is not applicable to state of maharashtra is that the reason that they have produced another uh, law and made, made it such a harsh punishment for such obscene, obscene material in indian penal code the punishment for obscenity is 3 months and your, the punishment in this impugned act is 10 years which is way harsher than the than a law that is applicable to the whole of india now i would request the counsel for the respondent to make his make his submission much obliged your lordship in order to address this issue we have to first understand what is an obscene dance what we understand from the case laws that obscene dance is what is aimed at arousing the perniest interest of the audience and where there is the only purpose behind the dance standard of morality has changed with the changing times but the moot question here is how do we decide the standard of morality and this has to be left to the legislature to decide and in the present case the legislature in its wisdom has considered the particular type of dance as obscene which is the wisdom of legislature is reasonable standard of morality the test of morality is a fluid and situation centric which has been dealt in the case law of ranjit d udeshi versus state of maharashtra we need to understand that the state government in order to achieve the objectives of article 21 has brought this legislation moving on to the second part of the argument that the punishment for obscenity has already been provided in the indian penal code 1860 very rightly mentioned by my learned counsel that there is a provision which applies to the entire india and also to the state of maharashtra but we need to understand here your lordship that the situation of maharashtra is different when it comes to dancing in the beer bars it's not similar to any other states of the country the number of dance bars that have mushroomed in maharashtra within the recent times is much more than any state for any comparison so definitely there is a need of additional legislation in order to curb these activity which are leading to the offenses that have been told in the earlier stage hence the state of maharashtra feels that this this specific law is important to curb these activities moving on to the part of the punishment as rightly stated by my learned counsel that the punishment provided under the indian penal code is 3 months which might be sufficient but the entire objective of the legislation to go for a more harsher punishment so that it acts as a deterrence in the society and all the activities that are intended by the state to be curbed get curbed by this objective hence this legislation has brought with a pure feeling and with a great intention to protect the rights of the women much obliged mr counsel do you have any statistical data proving the Uh, the situation in maharashtra is completely different from other states indeed your lordship we have annexed the further reports in annexure g and h which has shown the number of dancing bars that have been increased in maharashtra in the recent times okay you may sit much obliged your lordship i have a valid objection to make against my learned counsel objection my lord they have already give, been given the time to speak objection sustained counsel for the respondent please sit down allowed you may speak your lordship the state has failed to prove that what is the definition of obscenity and how it is related to the impugned act that we are talking about right now the learned counsel only explained what obscenity is but how is this related to the case at hand my learned counsel i have certain questions to put forward your lordship the first is my learned counsel please answer do you consider the classical dance forms done in the theaters or other institutions as obscene do you consider the bollywood songs that are presented on the big screen as obscene does the various dance forms portrayed in the dance competitions also obscene for you is it your incompetence that are you are trying to portray objection, here objection my lord they cannot have these allegations they against the state of maharashtra they are incompetent in their administration my I lord the council, no your they, administration they cannot have the is not able to objection regarding this I, I think the counsel for the respondents has a lot to say. So first of all, let him speak, and then you may continue. Your lordship, the counsel are just trying to waste the precious time of this honourable court. 
they do not have any substance on record to prove their case. The entire morality concept has to be decided by the state legislature. The state legislature consists of the people who have been elected by the people and show their collective understanding towards the same. Hence, there is no point to moot on this point and my learned counsel should not be given further time to digress the court by making wrong arguments. Mr. Counsel, I can see the hardship that your client, the state of Maharashtra is doing for these ladies uh, that I have seen in the annexer 1 and annexer 2. We will discuss it later on. So now you may continue the counsel for the appellants. Thank you a lot, sir. Does the state really define what is obscenity? Can you, on the behalf of the whole country, define what obscenity is? What is obscenity for you? Is it obscenity for me? Is it obscenity for a third person? Who are you to decide what is moral, what is immoral? Your lordship, tomorrow, if we give them this chance that they can define anything as obscenity, everything will be obscene for you. Objection. All the classical so uh, dance performances will it's become enough. obscene for you. Everything that is portrayed through will become obscene for the, for the government. You talk, about, you talk about the people, you talk about how they can decide what obscenity is. But is it, is it the people that are deciding or is it you, respondents, who are deciding for us? What obscenity is your lordship? Thank you. Okay, you may sit down. Mr. Counsel, you already have a central law prevailing, so why you are coming with the state law? As already addressed this honorable court on the issue, sir, that the provision is not sufficient in order to the prevailing circumstances and the situation in Maharashtra, and there is a dire need of a legislation. And hence, this legislation has been brought in furtherance of the objective enshrined under the constitution. Much problem. Moving to the third and the final issue, I will request the counsel for the appellant to make her submission. Thank you, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, the third point is the most absurd point of the case at hand. In, that, in this point, the state of Maharashtra, in this particular legislation, has asked these dance bars to install CCTV cameras. Is it not a violation of Article 21 of the Constitution? I would like to ask my learned counsel. Your Lordship, we totally understand Article 21 of the Indian Constitution and respect the judgment of this court. But you need to understand that this entire installation is for the security of the girls dancing there and also to curb the criminal activities. As stated earlier, these dance bars are acting as a joint where criminals are conspiring to conduct various activities in the state of Maharashtra. And this acts as a check and proper evidence for proper investigation. So your Lordship, as far as, as far as I can comprehend what my learned counsel is saying, that only dance bars are the places where such particular type of activities could take place. Tomorrow, indeed, are you, indeed, are you not, going to put such CCTV cameras in how, homes of people? Indeed does, not. Does indeed activities not. against we women not does not happen in homes? We are our whims and fancies. There are records of the National Crime Bureau Do you think which are showing that since the bars have been closed and this ban has operated, the crimes are reducing in the society. And that is evident that clearly states that this is a hub for the criminals to do such activities. Your Lordship, I have just one point. Are you trying to say that such criminal activities do not happen at home? Or, and if they do, are you trying to say these CCTV cameras will be installed at, at, at homes of people? Indeed also, also, not. Please, Indeed uh, let me not. please finish. Let me please finish. There was a judgment of this honorable Supreme Court known as K.S. Swami versus Union of India. In that very much judgment, it was said that right to privacy is a part of Article 21. Indeed, do you have any we, point? We accept that. But the entire... You just accept it. That is all. But the entire what are you doing about it? The objective is based on the studies that have recently been published and showing that the crime rates are increasing by the crime rates are increasing in bars. homes. Crime rates are increasing in homes. But we, we are just focused at this point. Honorable Court, we just I will want to mention that the intention of the legislature is very pious. And the entire objective is to prevent the women from the exploitation and the criminal activities that are done against them. And in that interest, within the powers given to the state legislature under the Indian constitution, we are moving ahead to attain a more better society for every individual, for me, for you, and for this honorable court. Thank you. Your Lordship, I have one point to make. Proceed. The, the learned council is trying to put forward a point that we are trying to put, uh, to move forward towards a more uh, secured society. Are the laws in the country the only thing that can make a home secure? 
Our CCTV cameras, the only thing that will make something secure. Indeed, no, at the dance bar, not, not a of place justice. where these women. That will help Let with her. the dis dispension of justice, my lord. Let her finish her argument, then I will give you the time. Much obliged. Are the dance bars the only place where criminal activities take place? Is it the only? Is CCTV the only left remedy that you have? Is monitoring people the only left ram remedy that you're going to curb against people? We also, uh, my learned counsel has made a point that that minor girls have had uh, such experiences. Is that how they are trying to control these these activities by installing CCTV cameras? Okay, you saw in the CCTV I have a camera. To and then I have a humble submission to make. If you are very clear of the fact that no criminal activity or the dance not being obscene or other activities not carried out in these dance bars, then what is the problem with the CCTV footage? We are just trying to provide more security to the girls performing their profession as stated by you. Your Lordship, I have one point to, uh, to my Lord and Counsel. What was the point of the Supreme Court judgment then? Were the judges, the learned judges, so naive to make a judgment which included right to privacy under Article 21 of the Constitution? When, when a judge, judgment is made in the country, is it, is it on to the councils to, to go against those judgments? Do you not, there has to be respect with respect to the judgments that have been already pronounced, which includes right to privacy. And right to privacy does include the fact that they should not be monitored. Council for the respondents, I think you have a lot to say, so now you can continue with your argument. Much obliged, Your Lordship. I have no further submissions to make. Uh, if you please permit, I may move to the closing statement. Mr. Counsel, you may proceed. Not one, two, five, or hundred, but thousands of families have been ruined after the dance bars have started operating. Number of people have gone bankrupt overnight. The instance of domestic violence, the instances of crime against women, the sex racket, the flesh trade have increased many fold. And this all is evident from the record of the National Crime Bureau, which has shown that after the operation of the dance bar, and in contrary, when the dance bars were banned, the curve got flattened. The humble submission of the council on behalf of the state of Maharashtra is that we have come up with this legislation with a very bona fide intention. We are concerned with the families. We are concerned with the women, their children, and their home. The entire discussion took place in the state legislature. And because of enormous complaints of prostitution and other things, the legislator, in its wisdom, found it to be proportionate to have a legislation like this. We do understand the issue of privacy. We do understand the concern of employment. But at the same point of time, we also need to address the exploitation of these minor girls happening in the dance bar. So we pray before this honorable court to decide in the interest of justice what is fair, reasonable, and just. The only thing that we intend is to keep in mind the intention of the state legislature to provide a dignified life to the women, to their families, to their children, and actually establish a moral fabric of the society. That's all, Your Lordship, uh, in uh, response to the closing lines that I would want to make, the employment that has been lost for the women, what is the uh, government of Maharashtra going to do about that? My one point that I would like to raise is that domestic violence also happens when women are unemployed because they are dependent on others. Coming to my last point, uh, Your Lordship, is going to be that all the points and all the arguments that I've made, I would request this court to please uh, consider this law as unconstitutional. The present matter, is a merger of three different date petitions. The civil date petition number 576 of 2016, the civil date petition number 24 of 2017, and the civil date petition number 119 of 2017. This court will dispose all the three date petitions in this one single verdict. So having heard the learned counsels for the petitioners and for the respondents, I would begin the pronouncement of this verdict in the present matter with a quote by Hillary Clinton, when she said that human rights are women rights and women rights are human rights. In the present matter, this court is of the opinion that the remedy is proving to be the ailment. And therefore, accurate treatment is the need of the earth. 
under the aegis of the constitutional ideals of equality and freedom. Without an out of doubt, this court concurs with the argument put forward by the counsel for the petitioners that the laws and the rules that are in question, which for the sake of clarity are the impugned law of 2016 and the impugned rules of 2016, have been enforced by the respondents in the state of Maharashtra. And these laws fails to meet the fundamental philosophical ideas of the law of the land, which is the Constitution of India, 1950. It promises to every person, and when this court says person, the person includes a citizen as well as a foreigner. The idols of equality, the idols of liberty, and the idols of justice. However, the court disagreed with the petitioner's argument about the impugned act when they said that the impugned act of 2016, for the sake of clarity, it is the Maharashtra prohibition of obscene dance in hotels, restaurants, and bar rooms and protection of dignity of women who are working therein, Act 2016, and the rules that were made thereunder of the Act. As the petitioner said that these two, the Act and the rule, are the rebirth of Section 33A and Section 33B. The court bluntly disagrees upon this fact. It is pertinent to quote the petitioner's counsel from para number 28 when they said that the, these laws are nothing but an old wine in a new bottle. Contrary to this, this court believes that neither the wine nor the bottle are the same. But yes, the new law is erroneous in parts. The learned counsel for the respondents has continuously put forward one single fact, that the impugned law and the rules have worked efficiently in the state to curb trafficking and prostitution rackets. But contrary to this, so due to lack of any reliable statistical data, the contention put forward by the counsel for the respondents stands rejected. In this case, the constitutionality of the following provisions that I'm going to pronounce have been put to test by the counsels for the respondents and the counsels for the petitioners. The first section was section number two, sub clause eight, of the impugned act 2016 that defined an obscene dance. Section number six, sub clause four, that barred the grant of license for bar dancing at places where a license for orchestra has been given. Section number eight, sub clause one, sub clause two, and sub clause four, that laid down the punishment for the violation of section six, clause four, that the court just discussed and the rule number three of the impugned rules, which states that no dance bars shall be established within one kilometer radius of an educational institution or religious places in the city of Mumbai. This court is of the opinion that section number two, clause eight, subclause one, and subclause two of the impugned act are constitutional because they defines obscene act that is covered under a former central law which is the Indian Penal Code 1860, section 294. Section 6, clause 4 of the Act has been declared ultra vias to the Constitution and it has been struck down as violative of Article 19, 1G of the Indian Constitution, which promises every citizen freedom, of pra freedom to practice any trade, profession, business, or occupation. Section 8, clause 2 is held to be constitutional because it provides the same thing which is provided in section 294 of Indian Penal Code. Condition number 11 of the impugned rule, rule number 3, which states that within a one kilometer radius, no dance bar shall be operational. One kilometer radius of an educational institution and a religious place. The condition number 20 of the impugned rules 2016 from rule number 3, which states that there shall be a compulsory installation of CCTV cameras in the dance bars is in is clear cut violation and in derogation of a performer's right to privacy, which is provided in Article 21 in conformity to the KS Potuswami judgment of this honorable court. The red petition stands partly allowed and are disposed in the aforesaid terms. If we talk about the Subscription of an academy's judiciary is iconic and plus. So these two are the different 
categories of an academy's judiciary subscription in which plus is just like the gold and iconic is the platinum which includes the plus subscription and some value added services as well so the price is on the screen the price is on the screen you can just have a look over the prices for instance the price for the plus subscription for a 24 months grant subscription is just 2292 rupees per month the actual cost would be 55000 and yes here also you can get a 5500 flat discount if you will use my code srt10 srt is the short form of my name and 10 denotes the 10% additional discount guys if you will go for the same tenure subscription in the iconic then it would cost you 91000 rupees for the whole 24 months and the per month cost would be just 373792 3792 rupees per month here also srt10 code will work that will give you an additional 10% discount so use my code and avail before it's too late so if you are also a judicial aspirant you can take the subscription using my code dpj10 and avail 10% discount on both the plus and the iconic subscription so come with us and prepare for the judicial services and increase your chances of becoming a judicial officer to know more about an academy clat category you can download the an academy app on your phone or you can log in the same on your laptop as well an academy clat has innumerable offers for example you will you can talk to the educator in the classes you will get access to sectional test series mock test series as well the classes will complete your course and would help you to uh, pursue your dreams of clearing your clat examination and other entrance examinations as well You can also use code Kriti B for availing 10% discount on all the courses in CLAT category. CLAT category has one month, three months, six months, nine months, twelve months, eighteen months, as well as 24 months subscription available. If you are in class 11th, you can take the 24 months uh, subscription right now, which is priced at 33,600 rupees, or the 12 months subscri subscription, which is priced at 23,100 rupees. Use code Kriti B and avail 10% discount on the same. Thank you for watching this video. to learn more about the judiciary please log in to the an academy app and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos on landmark cases so guys please like and subscribe on the channel